Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're talking about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. Previously, we were taking a look at NASDAQ and we were saying we were looking for some weakness to get into some shorts. I said I got in a short at the 15,320 area and my TP was to take out these swing lows. I did close the position uh, just for about a 150 point profit once we dumped down on the Thursday. And then I actually scalped a long from Thursday into Friday. So let me just go down to the one hour chart. I took profit once we get down to about 15,170 on the short. And then I actually built in a long on Thursday because we had a bullish close and Fridays are usually bullish. And um, we had NFP coming out. So I got along at 15,169 and my stop was below the low. And I thought we were putting in a higher swing low on the one hour for Friday to come out. My target was the most recent swing high at 15,300. And then M NFP came out and hit my take profit. We had an initial pump up on NFP. Once this hit take profit on NASDAQ for 138 points, I was looking for another long and I was looking at the four hour. So if you take a look at the four hour NASDAQ, it actually looked kind of bullish because you'll see that we made this high, we came down, swept the lows, we put in lower swing lows. Once we put in this low at about 14,900, we pushed up and we broke above this swing high. Boom, broke above. So this is why I started looking for longs and I took the long here uh, because once we pulled back, we put in a higher swing low. This is where I took a long and I actually got stopped out. I took partials and then I got stopped out on the rest. So the whole trade, I was barely profitable on. This is my most recent trade. We saw the push up. I got on a long at 15,258. My TP was above here. And then the stop was below the most recent low here. So basically if you, you see here, we have a swing low, a higher swing low a higher swing low and then on Friday we put in this swing low and I thought this was going to be another higher swing low targeting this most recent high. So if we just go down to the one hour, my entry was at uh, 15,258 on this bar once we sold off and my stop was below the four hour swing low. So if you just see, let's say 14, uh, 15,258 TP being at this most recent swing high here, stop being below the four hour swing low. So if you go to the four hour, stop was below that four hour swing low at 15,175. And you'll see I was profitable. So I took a partial off at uh, 15,320. And then we started selling off a little more aggressive than I, I wanted to see. This is the 15 minute on Friday. We were coming down more aggressive than I wanted to see. So then I took off another position at uh, 15,270 and then I got stopped out on the rest at uh, 15,175. Crazy rug pull. This ended up being a net green trade, uh, very slightly, not much at all. But the previous trades, like the short I showed you earlier and then the long earlier that we got out 138 points was great. So now, you know, I'm flat. I'm just looking to see Basically, you know, since we took out this low, it makes me think that we're possibly going to be targeting the next four hour swing low, but we could have some bullish pressure before we do that. So let's bring it back to the four hour chart. Basically, we put in this higher swing low and another higher swing low, and now we kind of just dip below and broke that. Because of that, that makes you think that we're going to target this next swing low at 15,100 uh, and then maybe target these lows at 15,000. But on ES, what's interesting was. We put in a higher swing low here, another higher swing low here, and this wick did not actually break the swing low. So technically speaking on ES, we're still making higher swing lows. Um, so, you know, this looks extremely bullish. Like I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend going into any shorts on ES, but because we broke a little on the NASDAQ, it looks like we could build in some shorts and, and target 15,100 and then possibly 15,020. So right now, uh, basically kind of just trading sideways. There's nothing, I have no high conviction set up right now. So I just wanted to go over NQ and ES. Again, NQ slightly weaker, a little better for short setups. ES a little better for long setups right now. You'll see that the VIX had a big push up and then kind of just sold off. There's some gaps here on the VIX. 
we could come down and fill those gaps. If we do, then you know, basically means that we could have another third high on ES. We could push to 4,500 on ES as the VIX fills that gap. You'll see a pattern. Uh, basically, if you just look at the pattern, it's you know push up 30% of the VIX and then kind of just get crushed. We'll see if that pattern holds up if we keep having the, that same kind of pattern. But you'll just see it right here. If you just look at March 8th, you'll see, boom, pushed up 60%. That was with the banking news and then sold off is you know we could have a time like that but you know once we have a topping tail like that and another red engulfing bar after usually the vix just continues to get crushed and when the vix get crushed nasdaq and es trend up so you'll see right here we made a low we pushed up 36 percent once we had that topping wick you'll see that the market just trended up all the vix got crushed another time we had a push up the VIX went up in about, oh, about 30% here. Boom, topping tail and then red bar just got crushed and the market trended up from there. Same kind of setup right now where from low to high, we pushed up 30%, topping wick, red bar. Makes you think this coming week, we're gonna trend up on ES and NASDAQ. Question is, is it gonna be something more like this where we pushed up? We had a red bar March 14th but then still had a little, we, we, we chopped around these high levels. But if you just go take a look, once we pushed up on the VIX and we had that first red bar, that actually marked the bottom on ES and NASDAQ. So if you just go look what happened after March 14th, after March 14th, we only went up on ES. Same thing on NASDAQ. If you go to March 14th, that is right where my mouse is here, we only went up. So, you know, based on the VIX, it honestly does look like we are just going to trend back up on NASDAQ, go to that 15,500 area, and it looks like on ES we are gonna trend back up and go to that 4,500 area. That's just based on the VIX. DXY, you know, continues to get crushed. So, you know, if we do take out these swing lows, then clearly we're just consistently going down on DXY, and that could have more bullish pressure for ES and NASDAQ, but if DXY, find support here and pushes back up, goes to that 105 area, then we could have some good shorts on NASDAQ and ES. But right now, this does look like DXY does wanna take out those swing lows. And because of that, again, that, that does support the long thesis on NASDAQ and ES. So based on what I'm seeing, it looks like longs are more favorable on ES at NASDAQ instead of shorts. PC is the put to call ratio. Uh, we did get a push up but it still looks like we're kind of trending down on the put to call ratio. Let's go look at the fear and greed index. Here is the fear and greed index. You'll see that we bottomed on the put to call ratio June 16th, we had a big push up. We came down and then we made a lower high. So the question is, are we gonna now consistently go back lower and trend lower on the put to call ratio? Based on this, it looks like it. And when we trend lower on the put to call ratio, we trend higher in the market. If we pushed back up and got above this 0.80 area on the put to call ratio, it means that shorts would be in favor and we would continue to go up. But that basically means right now that we're putting lower highs in on the put to call ratio and we're likely gonna trend back down, which means that we're likely gonna trend up in the market. Same thing with the volatility. You see the VIX with the 50 day moving average. Obviously this isn't something I look at a lot, but you can clearly see that every time the VIX gets up to the 50 moving average and gets rejected, the market trends up. You'll see here, rejected, 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 rejected. Right now, so far, we've reject rejected. Obviously, we could push back up and break above, but right now, we rejected, so it makes me think that we're more likely to continue to trend up in the market in the next coming weeks. However, you know, HYG is looking awful, right? This is high-yield corporate bonds. This is smart money. Typically, as HYG has been going down, it is a lagging indicator for the market saying that we're likely to have a sell-off. But this correlation, in my opinion, broke around May of 2023, and it didn't any longer matter. It mattered all throughout 2022, but ever since about May 2023, the correlation really broke. I'll show you, if we just look at SPX and you overlay HYG on the daily, you'll see that typically we had divergences. If you look back at my previous videos, I was showing all of these divergences, but uh, about May right here, look at this. You'll see that we were going down and the market was going up. And typically every single time that's happened, there was an, a significant sell-off. All we got was about a few day sell-off here and then boom, it just broke up and it didn't matter. We went up extremely high and fast and aggressive, but HYG, you know, it started to trend up as well. 
but it's still an overall negative divergence. You'll see from end of March to June 16th, severe negative divergence, essentially where HYG had been going down, but SPX had been going really high up. You can see those, those two lines there. So what that tells me is I'm not following it. That's why I haven't been looking at it anymore. If I had been looking at it and I just blindly believed in the divergence, I would have been holding short and I would have blown up my entire account because the drawdown would have been too huge. And again, you could point to the same thing. You could say, oh look, on uh, SPX, we made a higher high. HYG, we made a lower high. So why haven't we sold off aggressively? And then you'll see even here, we made a low here Friday, June 23rd, and we made an even lower low Thursday, June, July 6th. And in the past, when we had something like this, it actually implied that the SPX would take out the June 23rd or 26th low. So it basically implies that on SPX, we would fall down to about 4,300 or lower in the coming week or two based on this HYG divergence. But maybe the correlation broke and maybe it doesn't happen. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. But you know, if the correlation did hold up, then yeah, in the next one week, we would fall down to 4,300 on SPX, which is about two, 3% correction from here. But I, I think that the correlation broke. so. I wouldn't be following this anymore. July seasonality is typically pretty bullish, uh, the first half at least, and then the second half is usually a sell-off in NASDAQ and ES. So, you know, if you want to take, if you want to listen to some seasonality, then yeah, you'll see that DXY being weak, we had the VIX being weak. Uh, these things can allow NASDAQ to really push back up, get to that 15,500, maybe 15,600 by the middle of July. And then we could start trending down from middle of July into, uh, into the beginning of August and just basically breaking this uh, recent swing low at 14,800. And we can get to, you know, 14,800 to 14,600 at some point at the beginning of August or the middle of August. That's kind of what I'm looking at. But right now I'm, I'm actually looking for longs. I have a long bias on NASDAQ. So, you know, on Monday I'll see how the price action is, but I'll most likely be looking for longs at about that uh, 15,190 area, uh, possibly using uh, this recent swing low here at about 15,030 as a stop, and then probably targeting a, a new high, 15,480. That basically gives me a two to one risk reward ratio. Uh, if I can get a better entry, maybe just to get the entry at about 15,170, then I have my stop down here at about uh, 15,007, and then target being new recent highs at about 15,500, and that's a two to one risk reward ratio. So. If I continue to see weakness in the dollar, if the VIX is weak, then I'll likely look for a long at about the 15,200 area and uh, put the stop below this swing low here at about 15,000, targeting new highs in the NASDAQ at about 15,500. If that gets broken, then I'll be switching the bias to short and then I'll start look, look then I'll start to look for shorts and target the swing low at about 14,860. So right now I am expecting uh, us to kind of trend up this week. We'll see how it unfolds. But then after this week, I do expect us to roll over. But on ES, looking for us to target about 45.20 and then uh, possibly roll over and from the middle of July into the uh, beginning of August. And I think that you know we could really just trend down about beginning of August, maybe get down to 43.30 or 43.20. And um, that's basically what I'm looking at there. Uh, I'm not gonna get any, any longs on ES. I'm actually gonna be focused on, on NASDAQ, but that's basically what I'm expecting on ES. And um, we'll just have to see how that unfolds. There's nothing bearish about ES whatsoever until we break 43.70. Otherwise, just keep looking for longs intraday on ES, but on NASDAQ, it's 50-50. It, it, there's a little bit of short setup. There's a little bit of long setup. But since the dollar's weak and since the VIX is weak, and the put to call ratio is likely to keep trending down. That gives me more confidence to look for longs. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciated it. You're right, I really do appreciate all your support. It lets me know that you like these kind of videos. Thanks so much for watching. Look out for that next video coming out Wednesday night, and I'll see you in the next video.